So in 3.2, we're going to continue with box plots, but we're going to create this new one called a modified box plot. Um, and so modified box plots are going to have these things called lower and upper fences to identify and mark outliers. Sorry, that space threw me off. Um, to identify outliers and mark them. So outliers, again, are those like extreme values. So an outlier is an extreme value that stands out from the rest. So in the previous one, maybe there were some outliers on the right side, just because the right side was a little bit more spread out. So how can we figure that out? Um, so we're gonna define these two new formulas. So we're gonna start with the inner quartile range. Um, it's just Q3 minus Q1. Essentially, it's measuring the width of the box. So it's measuring from here to here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go from Q1 and take away one and a half boxes. And anything beyond that is considered an outlier. And then on the right side, we're going to start with Q3 and add. Um, on the right side, we're adding because things are getting bigger. So let's kind of guess if we have any outliers. So what we're going to do is the IQR is the width of the box. So I'm going to take the box. I'm going to paste it so that it looks like on the right side, I probably don't have any outliers because nothing is farther than one and a half boxes on the right side, though. So that's one box and then maybe a half, right? A half is a little hard to visualize, but one and a half boxes. So that last one might be an outlier because it might be more than one and a half boxes away. But on the left side, it looks like right. Nothing is beyond one and a half boxes. Um, so that's what the formula is measuring. And so we're subtracting on the left because the left is smaller. We're adding on the right because the right is bigger. So that's why the formulas are a little different. And so then anything beyond a fence is considered an outlier. So values beyond the fences are outliers and we're gonna mark them with a star. So I copied um, the house data from the previous example over. And what we're going to do is we're just going to try to identify outliers in this example. So we're re-graphing this example, but showing outliers. So we already found the five number summary. I copied the data over just so we'd have it. Um, so what we need to do is we need to find the IQR so that we can find the fences. So the IQR isn't that significant by itself, but it helps us find the fences. So we're going to do Q3 minus Q1, because that's telling us the width of the box. and I did not calculate this yet, we get 340.5. So let's go ahead and find the fences. So the fences essentially are like my cutoff. So let's do the lower fence. Um, visually, we decided we probably don't need the lower fence. Remember, it looked like it wasn't more than one and a half boxes, but let's practice the formula anyway. So we're gonna take Q1, and we're gonna subtract one and a half times 340.5. Um, so I recommend just following order of operations or you can type everything at once, which is faster. Um, but don't do 308.5 minus 1.5 enter because that's not following order of operations, um, but the calculator will follow order of operations. So just type everything at once. And so we get negative 202.25. What does this mean? If I had any values beyond that, um, I wouldn't include them. But all my data is positive, right? 114 is not beyond negative 202.25. So this one's not needed. That's like my cutoff for outliers. So we have no outliers on the left side. Let's do the upper fence. So we're adding because it's on the upper side. We're going to take 649 and we're going to add 1.5 times 340.5 IQR. So 649 plus 1.5 times 340.5, 159. 
1159, sorry, 0.75. So this is our cutoff for outliers. So anything bigger than this number is an outlier. So it looks like 1200 would now be an outlier because it's bigger than 1159. 995, right, would make the cut because it's less than, so it's within the fence. So we're gonna draw the box plot one more time. Um, we already labeled the bottom number line, so why don't you guys all relabel the bottom? Um, just pause the video while you label, then you can take your time. So we counted by 60s, right? 60 was a good scale. Trying to make this fit. Perfect. Cool. And we'll go ahead and make that same box plot. The only thing that's going to change is we're going to draw this fence now. So at 1159, which is around here, I'm going to draw that upper fence. Um, we don't need the lower fence because it didn't affect our data. And I'm going to mark 1200 with a little star. And then most of the box plot will look the same. So we're gonna mark the five number summary, except for the outlier. So I'm gonna mark 114 again. I'm gonna mark 308 again, 489, and 649. And then 1200 looks a little different because it's an outlier now. So otherwise it started off the same, right? Just a few small changes. I'm still gonna draw that box in the middle. So the middle looks the same. And then I'm gonna draw a tail to the min. And then what I'm gonna do is for the right side, I'm gonna to go to the next biggest item. So I'm gonna to go to 995, which is maybe right here. So 1200 is beyond the fence. We cannot cross the fence. So we pick the next value within the fence and that's where our box plot stops. And so that's a box plot with fences. And we like this because it makes maybe 1200 stand out a little more. Overall, it looks pretty similar to the previous one, um, but 1200 might stand out a little bit more. And we'll just end with this definition um, or question. What does the IQR represent? The IQR is the width of the box, right? I said this a couple times. So that's the IQR from here to here. And the fences are one and a half boxes away. So I kind of visually showed that when I cut and paste the box. So I think we'll make one more box plot in the next video. Um, as long as you can find the five number summary, the box plots, are fast. It's just a weird, I think we get intimidated because it's like a weird looking graph. So I'll see you in the next video.